first gentleman I want to introduce you to is a pastor. But he wasn't born and raised in a believer family. He's a son of Holocaust survivors. He's, he, was, he served in the Israeli military with distinction. He ran one of the leading Israeli companies um, up in Tiberias, up in the north. And then the Lord called him out of that and called him into the pastorate. Called him to pastor a congregation. In a land where being a pastor is not exactly, woohoo, that's exciting, that's esteemed. No, no. And God has used Daniel Yahav, a dear brother, to go through the fire. His, his church, his congregation has literally been firebombed. It has been attacked in so many ways. And I mean, when I say firebomb, I mean they literally threw firebombs into the building. At some point, the, the congregation had to flee, and they met in the woods for months. This is a man who has lived in the face of opposition and has not flinched, but has cried out to the Lord, give us boldness. Would you, introduce, would you welcome with me uh, our dear friend and brother and a messianic pastor, Daniel Yahav. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shalom. Welcome to Israel. I really appreciate you coming here to show your love and your concern, investing your time, your resources, and coming here to listen, to connect, to know how better to pray from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. We're one body, and we need each other. Dear ones, we heard last evening from our sister that this country, this Israel, is a miracle. It is indeed a miracle. We're living in a miracle. Reading the Bible and living here and seeing what has happened in the last hundred years, seeing in what's happening today and what's coming up all day, every day, every news report almost, you hear indicators. The Word of God is being fulfilled. The Word of God is alive. The God of Israel is alive. It is real. It is not just religion. It's happening all around us. We're living in the end times, exciting times. What a privilege to live in this place in Israel, to be born here. I was born in the city of Jaffa, you know, where Peter had this vision of this blanket coming up and down and being told to eat just everything, you know. Um, where Jonah tried to escape God. That's where I was born. I mean, five minutes walking away from, from ancient Jaffa. But now I live up in Tiberias. God has called me up there. I met my most wonderful Proverbs 31 wife. God, God arranged it, but that's for a different time, this story. And, uh, but anyway, called to the Galilee, to Tiberias, to minister there. As you've heard, the son of a Holocaust survivor. My father came here in 1948 uh, after surviving six months, the death camp of Auschwitz. When he was arrested... He was fired, shot both legs. One bullet was stuck in his uh, bone. The bone was broken. The other bullet went in and out through his leg. Miraculously, by the time six weeks later as he arrived in Auschwitz, even though he got no medical treatment, he could still walk. He could again walk. And he went through the selection. And Dr. Mengele didn't notice something was wrong with my father. He could just barely walk. He still came with the same pants with the holes in his leg. And he was waved to the labor site, rather to the gas chambers, where, he, where his mother and his grand and his, uh, my aunt and her fiancé and others died two years earlier. It's a long story. But when he comes in 1948 to Israel, the situation here was desperate. I don't know how many of you all know the, the facts. There were about 600,000 uh, civilians, when the last British soldier left, I mean Israel, is Jews living in this country, 600,000, surrounded by 40 million Arabs, attacked the next day by five Arab armies, Lebanese, Syrian, Iraqi, and Jordanian, Egyptian. We had no army at the beginning. Estimated 18,000 rifles only, no artillery, no tanks. During the war, the army was being built. Ammunition for six days, Shimon Peres, mentioned a discussion that Ben-Gurion had, our first prime minister, with one of the men that he wanted to appoint as the first general of the army. 
And this man said, I'm not willing to lead an army that's got bullets only for six days. When my father came here, he was sent together with a hundred Holocaust survivors, broken people, against the Egyptian army. Only 60 of them had a gun in their hand. My father was one of the 40. That's how he entered the war. It is a miracle because this little state of Israel could take in population 10 times. We grew 10 times, over 10 times, like 11 times in our size over the last 70 years. Refugees that came from all over the world. Economically, how do you survive that? We built houses for everybody. The whole Arab world kept the Palestinians in refugee camps till today, in spite of the old trillions of petrol dollars that they have. The little state of Israel built houses for all of the refugees. It's a miracle because the Hebrew language became a life. There is no parallel of a language which was dead for 2,000 years, and it's spoken today. My Hebrew Bible that I carry with me, the original language of God speaking to Abraham 4,000 years ago, that's what we read, that's what we preach. It's a miracle in so many different ways. It's the fulfillment, dear ones, of Ezekiel chapter 37, the vision of the valley of the dry bones. You know, when the dry bones came together, there was a lot of noise. There was a lot of noise. And the physical restoration of Israel was connected with a lot of noise. The world war, the Holocaust, all the battle which still goes on till today. Today, Israel is the only country in the world that is being threatened with total annihilation by the Iranians. They are committed by 2040 that there will be no Israel anymore. The only country, again. There was a lot of noise. Israel is in the center of world focus. People are talking about us. 2014, I think it was, Bibi Netanyahu shared it in the United Nations that in 2014 there were 24 uh, resolutions taken by the United Nations. I think it was the General Assembly. 24 negative resolutions, 21 of them had to do with Israel. Only one had to do with North Korea. Only one had to do with the war going on in Syria where in the meanwhile half a million people or more died and millions of others lost their houses. Only one had to do with the war in Ukraine. You know, Russia coming into uh, Crim there. 21 of them were aimed at us. There is noise. There is opposition. God of Israel is alive. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is alive. His word is true, and he's true to his covenants, and he's on the move again, not because we were good. We were not good as a nation. We went on 2,000 years of exile, and before that, the Assyrian exile, the Babylonian exile, not because we were good. But God still loves us, and he's still faithful to his covenants. And there is great noise bringing Israel together. And there still will be a lot of noise because the Gog and Magog war might be standing before us. And Antichrist will show up at some point and place himself in the temple which is yet to be built. The physical restoration had to do with a lot of noise. And so also the spiritual restoration of Israel, the second phase, has got to do with a lot of noise. And that phase, dear ones, is where you come into the picture. That's where you have a part in. Because you see, it says, from the four corners, let the wind blow on these dead ones. Wind in Hebrew is ruach. Ruach is the spirit. From the four corners. From the beginning, there was God, the Holy Spirit, awakening up. People from England and other places, Holland, praying for the establishment of the state of Israel. A hundred years before it started. And then later on from the West, Americas, people coming, investing their lives, faithful servants of God, coming to serve, not to direct and, and control, but coming to lay their lives and serve. And now as I travel in Africa, the South, God is waking up. There is an interest, a hunger. People want to know about Israel. And from the East, China, Taiwan, other places, South Korea, People are praying for Israel from the four sides. Let the spirit, let the wind blow. And there's a lot of noise going on and connecting with the spiritual resurrection of Israel. We as a fellowship, well, first of all, myself, you know, I've 
shortly after I was born, my mother came to faith and my two older sisters. My father was very much against the faith. When he first found the New Testament at home, he tore it into pieces, threw it in the trash can and yelled at my mother. But slowly, slowly, we connected with this Messianic fellowship. And back in those days, you needed the fingers of one hand to count a number of fellowships. And you had like 30 people in the fellowship. It was the body of Christ was very small. And yet that's when I started from the age of seven, going with my mother. But only at the age of 15 was I born again after the God touched me. Before that, I thought I'm a good guy. You know, Jesus didn't come for the good guys. But for about five and a half months, I was starting to slide into the world at the age of 15. And that, that's where I lost all my self-righteousness. And that's where God's grace came in and he could reach out his hand and I was saved. And then started a walk which continues till today. I'm nearly 60 years old. 45 years of experiencing the living God. Living God, a relationship with him. But it was first tested. Do you love me? Jesus says, John chapter 14, verse 15, verse 21, verse 23. Whoever loves me keeps my word, keeps my commandment. That's how Jesus understands romantic love. You want to love Yeshua? It's not enough to say hallelujah. Do you keep his word? So the Lord started pointing his finger on different areas of my life. And I had to cut them. Because I knew. Your eye stumbles you, pluck it out. And started walking with the Lord and went into the army and experienced the deadly accident. Seconds before the deadly accidents happened, the Lord warned me. I took the proper measures. I was saved. I warned everybody before the accident. It was at night. We didn't see anything. But then the Lord warned me in the Holy Spirit, you're going to flip, danger of flipping over. We were in a military vehicle on a mountain area, unfamiliar area. I warned everybody. The vehicle stopped, but then it was decided to move on. The officer in charge said, move on. I myself am an officer. I prepared myself for this falling over. Within half an hour, a second, I think, we flipped over. No, not half a minute, 30 seconds, I think it was. I don't know, very short. We flipped over. The guy that stood before me, the guy that stood on my right hand, both died. I was saved. Living God, living, experiencing a living God. Is my time up? Or my time is up. They want me to go on. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I've just started. Dear ones, let me just give one prayer request, okay? Because we're going to pray. Just one thing. Holy Spirit, we need, we've heard about the need of the power of the Holy Spirit, but let me say, when you read in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, the seven aspects of the Holy Spirit, the seventh one is the fear of God. We need the fear of God to protect us against the tsunami of sinfulness that is coming primarily from the West. Culture, pornography, sinful, deception that is penetrating into our youth. We need the fear of God. This is what kept me at the age of 15 from falling deeper into sin. The fear of God. The Holy Spirit. And we need power. And also for you, dear ones, let me just say that. When you come to Israel, remember that you're stepping on holy ground. Not holy ground in the sense that this is where Jesus walked, but the heart, the ground of the hearts. And you can be a blessing, and you have been a blessing, and you will continue to be a blessing. But also negative things came to Israel. Wrong teachings, wrong doctrines. We don't want to fall into denomination division when you come here to minister when you come here to bless remember you walk on holy ground the lord's eyes are on this place this is the only nation israel that was punished with blindness spiritual blindness it's the only nation that has the promise all israel will be saved god has got special interest for this nation and when you come here Pray to God to lead you, direct you, come into fear of God and bring what is good in here. God bless you. Thank you.
Subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll find some videos that we've chosen specifically for you. And if this is a ministry that you'd like to support financially, just make a tax deductible donation by clicking here to visit our giving page. Thank you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.